Starship's Flight 10 has only just wrapped up, yet the spotlight is already turning to what comes next. Attention now centers on Flight 11, the closing mission of the Starship V2 program, a flight that is expected to push the system even further. After the success of the last launch, the industry is watching closely to see how soon the next rocket will fly and what new hurdles it will take on. SpaceX's work is progressing at a rapid pace, but the exact date for liftoff will depend on hardware readiness, pad refurbishment, and final testing still underway. Elon Musk recently shared on X that SpaceX is aiming to maintain a launch pace of roughly one mission every two months. If this schedule is followed, Flight 11 could lift off in the second half of October, which would then set up Flight 12, the first of the V3 series, for a December launch. Yet, the current progress suggests the rocket could be ready even sooner. Both the booster intended for Flight 11, Booster 17, and the spacecraft Ship 38 have successfully completed cryogenic testing, a major milestone that demonstrates their readiness to withstand the extreme cold of propellant loading. Some observers speculate that Booster 15, an earlier flight vehicle, might be used instead, depending on final assessments. Regardless of which booster is selected, the hardware is well along in the preparation process, with only static fire testing remaining before moving on to the next stage of pre-launch work. Booster 15 still has all its engines in place, though a few may need to be replaced to ensure optimal performance. Booster 7, on the other hand, has already had its full set of engines installed during recent updates, meaning it could be ready for integration quickly. On the Starship side, engines have been transported to Mega Bay 2 to be installed on Ship 38. As of August 27th, Ship 38 had received its second aft flap, a critical component for flight control during ascent, orbit, and re-entry. This addition marks another key milestone in the preparation process, signaling that the spacecraft is moving steadily toward flight readiness and bringing Flight 11 closer to its anticipated launch window. One factor that could affect the timeline is the launch pad itself. The orbital launch mount took heavy stress during Flight 10. Systems like the booster quick disconnect and the ship quick disconnect appear to have suffered wear and now require refurbishment. Repairs are expected to take about a week. Once complete, the booster will be rolled out for pad testing, then brought back for final installations like the flight termination system and hot staging adapter. For the ship, the test stand and quick disconnect arm will be reattached to the mount before static fires are performed. The spacecraft could go through one or two of these tests before returning for payload integration and final checks. Based on this sequence, Flight 11 could technically be ready by late September but early October is a safer estimate. Flight 11 will be tasked with more complex objectives than Flight 10. For the Super Heavy booster, SpaceX will likely work on refining the angle of attack to improve fuel use and collect aerodynamic data. An engine failure in Flight 10, where one central engine shut down shortly after liftoff, will be a high-priority fix to avoid risk in future flights. Other successful procedures from Flight 10, like the active flip maneuver and two-engine landing burn, will be repeated for more validation. Engineers will also attempt to improve the final descent, aiming for a softer splashdown to keep the booster intact long enough for post-flight inspections. For Starship, the ascent phase will be closely monitored. Earlier flights before Flight 10 had ascent problems, so reliability here is critical. Once in orbit, payload operations will become a bigger focus. While Flight 10 released small payloads on a suborbital path, Flight 11 could aim for deployment from true orbit. This would be a major step toward regular cargo and satellite delivery. Another planned test is restarting Starship's engines in orbit. This was tried in Flight 10, but Flight 11 could involve a longer burn to simulate more demanding missions. Re-entry remains one of the most challenging parts of the mission. Flight 10 showed the heat shield tiles turned orange from oxidation, suggesting material changes may be needed. The aft flaps also took heavy stress, meaning they will likely get reinforced. Starship's landing will again be in the ocean. As Musk has said, true landing attempts may not happen until Flight 13. These splashdowns still provide valuable data, helping SpaceX improve maneuvers and slow the spacecraft in a controlled way.
While all eyes are on the rapid progress of Starship, SpaceX is quietly making history with its workhorse rocket, Falcon 9. On August 27, the company launched yet another batch of Starlink satellites from Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. The booster for this mission, B1095, was flying for only the second time, yet it performed flawlessly. After liftoff, stage separation occurred in just over two minutes and the first stage made a pinpoint landing on the autonomous drone ship, just read the instructions in the Atlantic Ocean, just six minutes later. That landing was far from ordinary. It was SpaceX's 400th successful recovery on a drone ship, a milestone that underscores how far the company has come since April 2016, when the very first drone ship landing happened during the Commercial Resupply Service 8 mission to the International Space Station. Back then, ocean landings were considered an almost impossible feat. Landing a 40-meter-tall rocket stage on a floating platform that's constantly moving with the waves requires extreme precision in navigation, control, and engineering. Many doubted it could ever be done reliably. Since that first success, SpaceX has expanded its fleet of drone ships, perfected the landing process, and turned what was once groundbreaking into routine. While other space companies have explored similar recovery methods, none have come close to matching SpaceX's track record. Blue Origin once aimed for ocean landings with its New Glenn booster, but its very first attempt ended in failure. A handful of Chinese startups have announced plans to try the same, yet none have delivered operational results. The August 27th mission also marked SpaceX's 108th launch of 2025. With four full months remaining in the year, the company is on track to surpass 170 launches, a pace that would have been unimaginable just a decade ago. Falcon 9's unmatched reliability and reusability have made it the backbone of modern spaceflight. Every mission adds to a growing list of achievements, and with no slowdown in sight, SpaceX continues to widen the gap between itself and every other launch provider in the world. In contrast, Blue Origin continues to face delays. The new Shepard NS-35 mission, originally set for August 23rd, was delayed due to booster avionics issues. A new date of August 26th was announced, but that attempt was also canceled for the same reason. The company confirmed they are still troubleshooting the problem. Avionics failures are serious, as they can cause loss of control or even destroy the vehicle. There is no confirmed new launch date and the delay could extend into September. NS-35 is designed to carry Blue Origin's 200th payload above the Karman line, a significant milestone that includes educational experiments from students, universities, and other small research projects all launched from their West Texas facility. Achieving this 200th payload would mark a notable achievement for the company, highlighting its contributions to education and research in space. However, repeated reliability issues with New Shepard especially concerning avionics and booster performance, continue to make reaching such milestones more challenging and uncertain, adding pressure to the company's timeline and public expectations. New Glenn, Blue Origin's orbital-class rocket, is also significantly behind its intended schedule. More than eight months have passed since its initial flight, yet visible progress on preparing for the next launch remains minimal. The upcoming flight is currently scheduled for September 29th, but so far, only stage and forward module tests were performed in July, with no booster rollouts or major integration milestones reported. Strangely, Blue Origin has already conducted tests on a second stage intended for the third flight, even before completing the second mission creating an unusual sequence of work. These limited steps have done little to accelerate progress, leaving New Glenn's readiness uncertain and increasing the risk that Blue Origin will fall even further behind competitors who are moving at a faster, more consistent pace. For now, SpaceX continues to push forward with both Starship and Falcon 9, hitting milestones that keep them at the top of the space industry. Flight 11 will be another key test, while Falcon 9's high launch rate and recovery record reinforce its dominant role in current spaceflight. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's delays with both New Shepard and New Glenn underline the challenges of keeping pace with SpaceX's momentum.